Hi everybody, it's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing our fifth unit on heredity by discussing topic 5.5, which is environmental effects on phenotype. So what we've been studying this whole unit pretty much is how traits are determined by the genes that you get, which are part of the chromosomes that you get from your mom and your dad, and you get a different combination of them depending on various things that happen in meiosis, which is the production of those sex cells. All right, so a lot of our, a lot of our traits that are a lot of our characters, everything, a, a lot of things about us are determined by genetics. And we have no control over it because, you know, that's in our DNA, that's in our genetic code book, and, you know, our cells read the code book, and they make you. Um, but that's not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily determine everything. So as I put up here, phenotype for some traits of organisms is not solely based on genetics. So if you've ever met a pair of identical twins before, you might know that, you know, their DNA is exactly the same. It's exactly the same. They got the same combinations of mom as they did from dad, and they are, they're identical genetically. Um, so I've got, you know, various pictures of identical twins over here. But, you know, if you've ever met identical twins before, not everything about them is identical. All right? You even, you know, if you get to know them well enough, you know, you can determine which one's which after a while, right? You'll, you'll be able to tell. Maybe it's their demeanor. Maybe it's, you know, certain things about them. Maybe, maybe it's even the way they look. Who knows? But they're not exactly the same. All right? And this, uh, this has been debated by psychologists, the, um, the ability of nature versus nurture to determine, you know, who you are, right? So uh, phenotype isn't all genetic. All right, so there's um, environmental effects on phenotype as well, and this is a uh, this is a phenomenon called phenotype plasticity or phenotypic plasticity, and that's when individuals with the same genotype exhibit different phenotypes in different environments. All right, so just like our identical twins before, they have the same genotypes, meaning they have the same exact genetic material, but they might not exhibit the same exact phenotype for everything. Um, and there's more kind of extreme examples of this in the animal kingdom, in the plant kingdom, in the fungus, fungi kingdom. Um, one in particular here, take a look, I'm going to be running through a lot of these examples, are these uh, two different tadpoles. They're the same species, they're in the same, uh, well, this, yeah, they're the same species, not necessarily the same population, in that uh, they have different environmental effects in two different um, environments here. So this tadpole uh, grew up in an environment in a pond with no predators. I believe with a particular, I think it's salamander larvae are their predators of uh, these types of tadpoles. And over here we have a tadpole that grew up in an environment with predators. And you can see a distinct uh, change in maybe even size and coloration of these two, dis two types of tadpoles. They have the same genotype, you know. They, they're going to be producing uh, the same kind of proteins from their DNA, but based on the environment, they grew up to be different. Um, and that's called phenotype plasticity. So the, a character like this, maybe like the size of the tadpoles and the coloration of the tadpoles is what we call multifactorial, which is influenced by both genetic and environmental factors, hence multifactorial. Multiple factors go into the expression of that phenotype. Okay, so some more examples, um, some human examples, human skin pigmentation, height, weight, and even intelligence are all affected by environmental factors. And this might seem a little obvious, um, but a lot of these, these characters that I just talked about, they're not 100% genetic. So the way you eat is going to affect your height and weight. The way your experiences are going to affect your intelligence, okay? And how much you, you go outside and tan is going to affect your skin pigmentation, that kind of thing. And even what you eat, uh, your nutrition can also affect your skin pigmentation as well. So again, here's another example of how, you know, genetics does not determine everything. It's been scientifically shown that genetics does not determine everything. All right, so uh, those are environmental effects. Here's some more examples of phenotype plasticity that I'd like to discuss, some more extreme examples. Um, so here's a sea turtle. Sea turtle's laying her eggs. Um, and I'm not sure if it's uh, all in, in all reptiles, but in many reptiles like sea turtles and like different types of crocodilians, the really ancient reptiles, 
um, the temperature of the reptile eggs, the eggs while they're after they're laid, how the temperature of their incubation determines their sex. I believe a colder temperature produces males and a warmer per temperature produces females. Um, you might have to double check me on that because uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, just the temperature of incubation can determine their sex, which is you know clearly not determined by genetics then. Um, and also the pH of soil determines certain types of flower color. So this type of orchid right here, um, and it's uh, when you plant it in different types of soil with different pH or power of hydrogen, um, it ends up changing the flower color, which is pretty remarkable um, if you think about it. So you plant the same exact plant with the same DNA in two different soils, and they're going to have different uh, flower color based on the soil pH. Um, another example that you may have heard of before is that, you know, Arctic animals like this cute, far far wow, Arctic fox. That came out wrong. Arctic fox. Arctic fox. <laughs> Their fur color changes seasonally and in responses to changes in UV exposure. All right, so uh, different, different animals, particularly in the Arctic, their fur color is going to change based on, you know, what season it is. So here's the Arctic fox in the winter. Here's the Arctic fox in the summer. Same exact, uh, same exact animal, really. Um, and it's going to express a different phenotype based on the season. Different animals also produce uh, different amounts of melanin and change their fur color in responses to UV exposure, much like human beings. Uh, the more UV exposure you receive as a human being, the more melanin you're going, your skin is going to produce and thus um, change your skin pigmentation. It's the same thing with animals. Um, anyway, and then the last one is uh, yeast produce different types of pheromones in response to the presence of opposite sex. Right, so if you have all male yeast cells, they're going to produce different pheromones than if you have mixed male and female yeast cells. You know, because they got to send out their s chemical signals and they got to they got to procreate. Right, they're they're living things. Um, I believe that's it for this lesson. Yes, it is. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time. Remember, genetics does not determine everything.